In this video, we're going to define the commonly used phrase of acceleration. Now, a few keywords that you see when you talk about acceleration is an object speeding up or slowing down. Those relate how the velocity changes over time. So an object whose velocity is increasing is said to be speeding up, whereas an object whose velocity is decreasing is said to be slowing down. Now, another thing that you often talk about is how fast or how slow the object's velocity is changing. Those are relative terms. So fast and slow are relative to something. So as an example, let's say you had an object whose velocity was changing by 2 meters per second every single second, or 2 meters per second squared. That object would be speeding up more slowly than an object whose acceleration was, say, 10 meters per second squared. So how fast and slow the velocity changes is a relative term. Now what I'd like to do next is to actually define what acceleration is in a more formal way and talk about where these units of meters per second squared comes from. Now the definition of acceleration is how fast the velocity changes. That is, a change in velocity per change in time. Or another way to think of it is how fast or slow the velocity changes. Another way to write change in velocity is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. This is the change in velocity over the time it takes to change that velocity, the final time minus the initial time. So let's try to make this what we call a definition of acceleration, how fast or slow the velocity changes, more clear with an example. So to begin, imagine you have some runner and they're on a starting line. So this is the starting line for the runner. And let's say that their initial velocity is zero. They're starting from rest. And if you had a stopwatch, the stopwatch would probably read an initial time of zero seconds, although it doesn't necessarily have to read that time. Now, let's say over here is your finish line. And let's say you have a radar gun like the police would use to, what we would say, uh, clock the speed of a car. And so let's say that this person hears the starting gun and they just start running as fast as they can in this direction. And let's make the assumption that they're continuously increasing their velocity or speed. That is, their velocity continuously increases. Let's say by the time they get over to this point, let's say that their final velocity, the velocity that's read off by this radar gun, is 3 meters per second. And let's also assume that once this person reaches the finish line, their final time is 3 seconds. So let's try to figure out how to use the definition of acceleration. So in this example, our acceleration is going to be the change in the velocity, which is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, divided by the time it takes to change that velocity, t final minus t initial, the final time minus the initial time. Now, if their final velocity is 3 meters per second, we'd write 3 meters per second minus whatever their initial velocity is. In this case, it's 0 meters per second, so I'd write 0 meters per second. So the velocity is changed by 3 meters per second. Now, the next bit of information we didn't need to know is how fast that velocity changes, that is, the time interval over which it changes. And in this case, it will be 3 seconds minus the initial time, which is 0 seconds. And when you simplify this, you should get 3 meters per second divided by 3 seconds. And that will further simplify, so 3 meters per second, which is the change in velocity, per change in time, which is 3 seconds, can simplify to 1 meter per second per every 1 second. Basically what you do is you divide 3 by 3 and you get 1. So what this is telling us is that the velocity of the object increases at a rate of 1 meter per second every single second that this object or person is accelerating. Now, let's talk a little bit about the units. Let's make sense of the units because we keep writing the units as meter per second squared. Now, if you look at the units which act just like real numbers do, that is, you multiply and divide them just like you would multiply and divide real numbers. So let's take a look at just the units. So we get meters per second divided by seconds. This is an improper fraction. And so to make sense of the units, let's convert this over to a proper fraction. So to, be, so to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the denominator, the term in the denominator. But remember, from math, what you do to one side of an equation, you do to another side. What you do to the bottom of an equation, you have to do to the top of the equation. So I can't just multiply the bottom by 1 over seconds. I have to also multiply the top by 1 over seconds. Notice when you do that, you get 1 over s divided by 1 over s. 
Notice when you divide 1 over s by 1 over s, you get the number 1, so we're still completely valid. Now what you should notice is that this unit of time cancels out with this unit of time, and what you get is a meter per second times 1 over seconds. And when you do that out, what you should get is a meter per second times a second, and a second times a second is a meter per second squared. And this is just shorthand notation for a meter per second per second. So one other way to think about this unit, so one other way to think about this unit is it's a change in velocity per change in time. And using the example that we just did of a one meter per second per one second, that is our velocity changes by one meter per second every second, which we just figured out we can write as one meter per second squared. To think about this expression in English, what it means is that the velocity changes by one meter per second every second, every one second. Or another way to think about it is that the velocity changes by one meter per second per one second. And these two are expressed in a very similar way, but for some people it's easier to see that it's a change in velocity of one meter per second every single second versus one meter per second per one second. So these two expressions mean the exact same thing. Now we're going to pick up the idea of acceleration in the next few videos.